John Keller, and we're here at the AUVSI show in Orlando, Florida. Uh, this is David Kelly. He is the president and CEO of Bluefin Robotics, one of the one of the most renowned uh, unmanned underwater vehicle designers and manufacturers in the world. And this is the Bluefin 21. This is a fairly large size unmanned underwater vehicle that right now today is out in the Indian Ocean west of Australia looking for the disappeared Malaysia Flight 370. Um, the, the, the first few dives that happened last month, um, uh, they needed to make some adjustments because actually the water there was deeper than they thought. So, Mr. Kelly, why don't you tell us about how that operation's going? Well, as you know, John, uh, the first series of dives lasted 19 days, uh, 19 consecutive days. There were 19 dives. Uh, the vehicle surveyed roughly 190 square miles, which included the high probability area as well as the area immediately surrounding it. Uh, the quality of the data was, was good. Uh, they came back to port, uh, swapped out the crews, uh, made some adjustments to consumables and spare parts, and have gone back out to continue surveying. Okay. Well, how and, and how long does one dive take, and how much how much uh, area can it cover in a single dive? So the vehicle takes about two hours to get down to the 4,500 meters of depth, which is a little under three miles. Mm -hmm. It can survey for about uh, 12 hours and then it comes back up for another two hours. So the standard mission is about 16 hours. Uh, the vehicle itself can run 20 to 24 hours depending on environmental conditions and what sensors are running. And during the previous sequence of dives, the longest dive they did was 27 hours, uh, surface to surface. But the typical dive has been around 16 hours. Now, it's a very uh, rough, cold water out there in the South Indian Ocean. Does that influence battery life on the, on the vehicle? Well, so at 4,500 meters, the environment is it's pitch black. Uh, the water is slightly above freezing. And the pressure on the vehicle at that point is uh, the equivalent of having a Cadillac Escalade uh, pressing down on your thumbnail. So it's many thousands of pounds per square inch. Uh, it is a challenging environment, but the vehicle was designed to operate in those conditions. Okay. Um, has there been any indication of, of uh, anything? Have you gotten some uh, progress reports from, from the companies doing the survey? Well, I think first of all, we owe a, a debt of thanks and gratitude to the men and women who have been working on this search effort for the last several months. You know, the initial search area started roughly the size of Texas. Uh, through analysis of data and other uh, work, they narrowed the survey area down to the high probability area they wanted to survey. Uh, Phoenix International is the company operating the vehicle. They own the Bluefin Robotics vehicle. Uh, they've used it on multiple other searches, so that they know what they're doing, um, and they're, they're doing their best to, to, to survey the bottom to see if they can find objects of interest. Okay. Well, this Bluefin 21, it isn't just looking, it, it isn't designed just to look for uh, lost aircraft. It's designed for all kinds of uh, undersea surveys. Uh, it's particularly useful for uh, countermine warfare, and in fact, this Bluefin 21 is going to be the backbone of the U.S. Navy's literal combat ship countermine capability. It's also uh, also useful for anti-submarine warfare and things like that. So, as far as we know now, we don't know where that where that uh, lost Malaysia Flight 370 is, but people can tell us a lot of places where it isn't. I'm John Keller here in Orlando at AUVSI.